Another cup of Maxwell House coffee, George? Well, sure. Pour me a cup, Gracie. Maxwell House is always good to the last drop. And that one's good, too. Yes, Thursday night, and Thursday night means it's Maxwell House Coffee Time, starring George Burns and Gracie Allen. <laughs> With yours truly, Bill Goodwin, the girls of the Beverly Hills Uplift Society, our special guest, Vice President of NBC, Mr. Sidney Strotz, and the music of Meredith Wilson and his orchestra. For your Thursday night enjoyment, it's George and Gracie. And for your everyday coffee drinking enjoyment, it's Maxwell House, with extra flavor in the blend because of choice Latin American coffees, skillfully combined. Extra flavor in the cup because Radiant Roast develops the full flavor of every coffee bean. The result is that today more people buy Maxwell House than any other brand of coffee in the world. As we look in at the Burns home today, we find a meeting of Gracie's club, that bane of George's existence, the Beverly Hills Uplift Society. But I know what I can say. Uh, quiet, girls, quiet. Uh, ladies of the Beverly Hills Uplift Society, our meeting will open with a calling of the roll. Clara Bagley? Here. Francis Fowler? Here. Blanche Morton? Here. Meredith Wilson? Present. <laughs> Wait a minute. This is a ladies' club. How did he get in? Oh, that's right, Francis. You weren't here when Meredith joined. We made him an honorary woman. <laughs> that's right, Miss Fowler. And you've been a credit to our sex, Meredith. Well, thank you, Gracie. <laughs> Although, I wish you hadn't given my name to the May Company. I've been getting some rather puzzling advertisements from the lingerie department. <laughs> oh, let's get down to business. We're here to discuss our new play. Oh, yes. Girls, we have a wonderful play to start our summer drama season. It's the story of an Irish girl who falls in love with Raoul, a handsome French roué. Or is it roué, a handsome French Raoul? <laughs> well, anyway, it shows how a woman's pure, tender love lifts Raoul from being a pickpocket and makes him a jewel thief. Oh, how marvelous. Oh, it sounds wonderful. Uh, what's the name of it, Gracie? Well, it's called The Folly of Molly O'Malley. <laughs> and uh, since the heroine is an Irish girl, I kind of thought you'd let me play the lead. Well, I'm Irish. Let me play the lead. Oh, oh no. Well, no, I don't know. Girls, 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 look, the only fair thing to do is vote. Now, all in favor of me signify by saying I. 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 Uh, all in favor of Blanche signify by stating their correct age. <laughs> well, <laughs> looks like I won, doesn't it? <laughs> now, the next problem is, where can we put the play on? Gracie, did you speak to the man about renting Hollywood Bowl? Oh, yes, Meredith. The place holds 95000 and I offered him 50% of our gate receipts, but he refused. He refused an offer like that? Yes, he wanted $10 cash. <laughs> well, that was our last chance. All the theaters have turned us down. Well, now, I've been doing a little thinking, girls. Uh, George and I broadcast from a wonderful theater at NBC every Thursday night. Let's do our play from there next Thursday night, and it'll go all over the country. But, Gracie, how will we ever get George to let us take over your program? Oh, by offering him the part of Raoul. Oh, no, that part calls for someone like Charles Boyer. Blanche, for your information, Charles Boyer and my husband could change places. <laughs> They could? Yes, and it would be perfectly all right with me. <laughs> Gracie, even if we offer George the lead, do you think that'll do it? Oh, sure. All we have to do is to make him think he's a great actor. Every man has a little ham in him someplace, and my husband is armor from his feet to his waist, and <laughs> from there on, pure swift. <laughs> you mean we have to tell George what a great actor he is? That's right. All right, we'll rotate, girls. The biggest liars go first. 
<laughs> no, never mind. Just to be on the safe side, I've written a poem that you girls can recite to George. Well, you better hurry and give it to us, Gracie. Here comes George up the wall. Oh, now here. There's a line for each of you. Now, I'll go out and soften George up with a little flattery, then bring him in here for the kill. Hello. Lunch ready? Oh, don't move, George. Huh? Just stand there in the doorway with the sunlight behind you. Oh, how beautiful you look. Like a picture, a masterpiece. Blue boy, a whistler's mother. <laughs> yeah, someone ought to frame me. Don't worry, we will. I, I mean, <laughs> I'd like to. You're so handsome. Gracie. How thrilling you look as you stand there. Your shoulders filling the doorway. You know, I had no idea your shoulders were so wide. Really? Absolutely. They don't look that wide when you hang them on the chair at night. <laughs> Gracie, I would like my lunch. I'm very... Hey. What's the matter? All those women's coats and hats on the hall table. Gracie, is there a club meeting in the den? Yes, dear, there is. A meeting of the George Burns Fan Club. I thought... The George Burns Fan Club? Yeah, oh, didn't you know about it? It used to be the Van Johnson Fan Club. Then they saw you and blew their tops. <laughs> Gee, I got a fan club? Well, yeah, would you like to meet the girls? Why not? Let's give them a little treat. All right, come on. Here he is, girls. Oh! This is my fan club? They think you're the greatest actor who ever lived. Wait a minute. Oh, come on, George. Register some emotions for them. First, anger. This is that broken-down club of yours, the Beverly Hills Uplift Society. Wasn't that wonderful, girl? Yeah. Oh, oh, stop it, stop now, it. Now, George, George, register humor. Say something that'll make us all laugh. Get these old bats out of here. <laughs> something else. You register something. Register these dames with the kennel club. Now, just a minute, George. As a woman, I resent being called a dame. <laughs> Quiet. Oh, now, George, that's no way to talk to your fan club. Fan club, my eye. This is the Beverly Hills Uplift Society. Oh, no. You've forgotten their faces. Faces like these you don't forget. <laughs> now, shoo before I spray DDT on you. Scat. Get out. Psst. Out, 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 out. Oh, what an actor. Oh, shall we give him another hand, girls? Yes. 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 Oh, there are no two ways about it, George. We've got to have you for the lead in our play. Oh, no. That's out. Forget it. Mm, I was afraid of this, girls. Now we'll have to settle for someone like Gregory Peck. Gregory Peck? Oh. Uh, Gregory Peck. <laughs> oh, I realize he won't be as good as George, but... These are the days of shortages. We may want a bushel, but we have to take a peck. <laughs> uh, why would you girls want me to take the lead in your play? I'm not a great actor. We want you because the lead is a handsome, suave, debonair, charming lady killer who's loaded with sex appeal. Well, that's different. That wouldn't take acting. Oh, then you'll do it, George. Well, I don't know. Are you sure the girls really want me? Do they want you? Girls, recite that poem about my husband. Uh, oh, George Burns, you cute little bug you. How we love to kiss and hug you. We would squeeze you till we hurt you. Were it not for our maidenly virtue. I had no idea you girls felt that way about me. What play are you planning to give? Well, it's called The Folly of Molly O'Malley. And, George, you would play Raoul, a handsome French jewel thief who steals Molly's heart. A Frenchman, huh? Mm -hmm. Oh, this for you and that for me and this for your papa. La, 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 la. La, 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 la. <laughs> um, for you, I sing, I dance, I play. <laughs> Say, when will this play be put on? Oh, next Thursday night. That's the night of our radio broadcast. Oh, so it is. Whatever can we do? Hey, wait a minute. I got an idea. 
Why not put on the play in our studio and broadcast it? Why, George, that's a brilliant idea. I'll go down and talk to Al Kay, our producer, about it. Au revoir, mon patoot. <laughs> and au revoir to you, mon patootes. <laughs> oh, girls, we did it. Now we can broadcast our play all over the world. It'll be the biggest thing ever to hit radio. Yeah, we'll be followed by a declaration of war. War? You don't think France is going to take his accent laying down, do you? <laughs> oh, let's face it, Gracie. Your husband is not the Charles Boyer type, a glamorous Frenchman. He's very close. Then let him play a Scotchman. <laughs> <laughs> well, who can play the part of Raoul? Well, surely between all of us, we must know a man like Charles Boyer. Let's run over our husband. If I knew a man like Boyer, that's just what I'd do to mine. <laughs> <laughs> just joking. <laughs> now, uh, let's see. Who can we get? Wait a minute. Huh? If the part calls for Charles Boyer, let's get Charles Boyer. Oh, don't be silly. Well, I mean it. I've met Mr. Boyer, and I know I can persuade him to do it. More power to you, Gracie. Oh, but this is going to be awfully hard on you. Me? Well, we're giving the play next Thursday night, and that only gives you a week for rehearsal. She's right, Gracie. You'll have to rehearse those love scenes with Charles Boyer day and night. Do you want to back out? <laughs> You're cute. <laughs> <laughs> It's Meredith Wilson and his orchestra. I bet everybody recognizes that song you're playing the minute they hear it. I'm sure that's true, Bill. And I think the words are about as famous as the melody. Who doesn't know Meet Me in St. Louis? Meet Me at the Fair. You know, Meredith, somehow there's real magic in those words. I guess whether it's a world fair, a state fair, or a county fair, we all look forward to the excitement, the competition, the colorful displays, the blue ribbon prizes, and all the fun and gaiety. Yes, we Americans love a fair. And I can't help thinking, too, how we Americans love coffee. And how, like the fair that's such a distinctive part of the American scene, so, too, Maxwell House through the years has become a real part of the American scene. For today, the flavor richness of Maxwell House is enjoyed by more people than any other brand of coffee in the nation. Now, to give Maxwell House that famous flavor, fine Latin American coffees are skillfully chosen each for its own special contribution. There are Manizales for mellowness. Medellins for richness. Other choice Latin American coffees for vigor. And Bucaramangas for full body. The result is a blend so deliciously satisfying that Northeast, South, and West, people ask again and again for Maxwell House. Coffee they know is good to the last drop. Every little dream 
seems to whisper, Louise. <laughs> George, <laughs> there's been a little change in the casting of our play. Instead of the French jewel thief, you'll be a nice, honest Irish policeman. A cop? Yes. <laughs> oh, gee whiz. Well, the, the part... Louise insists for you. No, the part is perfect for you. A tough, rugged cop who stands in his own two feet. And you've got just the two feet for a cop to stand on. Well, I won't get a chance to use my French accent. That's the thing I do best. Well, can't you do an Irish accent? Sure, but it's not as good. Oh, I bet it is. Let me hear both accents, and I'll tell you honestly which one I think is better. Okay. Faith, and tis a son of the old sod I'm after being bejabbers. Oh, oh, that was wonderful. Now try the Irish. <laughs> That was the Irish. Oh. oh. Oh, sure, sure. I knew it all the time. Well, that's settled. You'll be the policeman. But I'd be sensational as the romantic jewel thief. Well, that's the trouble. You'd be too sensational. You'd make people think that this is an unhealthy climate. How? Oh. Well, when you started making love and the women in the audience started panting, it would sound like everyone in California had asthma. <laughs> Say, that's true. I guess you better get somebody with less sex appeal. Yeah, we'll get Charles Boyer. Boyer? He's got almost as much as I have. Oh. Well, he, he certainly has. has. Not. After all, you expect him to have the European charm. He was born in Europe. Well, yeah. But you got yours the hard way, in the Bronx. <laughs> Well, all right. I'll play the Irish cop. Good. I'll go in and tell the girls everything is arranged. Okay. Bigora? <laughs> well, girls, it's all settled. Raul will be Charles Boyer. Oh, oh what is that wonderful day? Oh, lucky you, Gracie. <laughs> Next Thursday night on the Maxwell House broadcast, Charles Boyer will be making love to you. Oh, yes. Darn it. Why do we only have half hour? Suppose I'm right in the middle of a scene with Charles Boyer. He says, ah, Gracie, is this love or is this infatuation? And some little schnook says, this is NBC. <laughs> That's just what'll happen, Gracie. They'll cut you off and go on to the Dinah Shaw program. The Dinah Shaw program? That's it. I'll get her half hour, too. I'll go to Sidney Stroats, the vice president of NBC. And he'll let you have Dinah Shore's half hour? Well, flattery worked on George. It'll work on Mr. Strokes, too. You girls wait here. Well, it was sweet of you to see me, Mr. Strokes. Not at all, Gracie. I'm only sorry we haven't met before. Oh, so am I. You know, you're just what I expected a big radio executive to look like. Only I thought your hair would be curlier. Curlier? Why? Well, I'd heard so much about your wavelength. <laughs> Perhaps I'd better explain wavelength. Oh, and you could, too. You radio officials are so smart. Why, if it weren't for you, people would just breathe the air and never know it was full of truth, consequences, and John's other wife. <laughs> I'd better explain that, too. Oh, yes, and the things you can do. An ordinary person like me can dial the dials, but you know how to condense the condenser and batter the battery and, and kill the cycles. That I won't try to explain. Well, so much for the flattery. Now let's get down to business. I, um, I have a teensy-weensy favor to ask of you. What is it? Lock Dinah Shaw out of her studio next Thursday and let the Beverly Hills Uplift Society go in instead. Gracie, you're just broken the world's record for teensy-weensy favors. Oh, then you'll do it? I couldn't possibly do a thing like that. But I need the extra time for my love scenes with Charles Boyer. I'm sorry, Gracie. Mr. Strokes, how would you feel if Charles Boyer had you in his arms and was just about to crush you to him? And Dinah Shaw started to sing. I would welcome the interruption. <laughs> then you won't do it for me. Most certainly not. All right, Mr. Strotes, but I'm warning you. I'll steal Dinah Shaw's half hour somehow. Goodbye. Well, I heard she was unusual, and what an understatement that was. 
I'd better telephone her husband and get him right over here. And so, girls, I'm forced to report that Mr. Strokes would not give us Dinah Shaw's half hour. Oh, is it that me? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> well, what should we do? How about blackmailing him? Huh? How about blackmailing him? Oh, Clara, we couldn't stoop to blackmail. We've got nothing on him. Well, okay, let's frame him. Well, now that's more in keeping with the dignity of a ladies' club. How will we work it? Well, one of you girls will go to his office and vamp him, and then I'll walk in and catch her on his lap, and then we'll have him in our power. Oh, that's Ooh. exciting. Oh, yeah. Now, who will be our vamp? We, uh, we need someone who really looks desirable. Blanche? Yes? No. <laughs> that's pretty silly. Um, Clara? Yes? Well, that's even sillier. <laughs> Francis. Yes. Oh, no, that's ridiculous. <laughs> My goodness, we're in trouble. I uh, don't suppose I do as the vamp, Gracie. <laughs> no, I'm afraid not, Meredith. No, I thought not. The spirit is willing, but the flesh is unconvincing. <laughs> girls who are bad. Don't worry, Gracie. Here comes a man who's bound to know one, Bill Goodwin. Oh, sure. All oh, our troubles are over. Well, hi, Gracie. Oh, hello, ladies. <laughs> <laughs> all right, girls, all right. Break it up. Yes. Bill, hmm? I'd like to ask you something. You've met just about every kind of woman there is, haven't you? Well, Gracie, I thought I had till I ran into these. <laughs> <laughs> well, anyhow, Here's the idea. You see, next Thursday on our program, we're going to have the most glamorous man in Hollywood. Oh, well, I know. I'm on every Thursday. Oh, no, not you, Bill. Charles Boyer. Boyer is more glamorous than me. Gracie, you blindfold Hetty Lamar and let me make love to her, and I'll bet you a dollar she couldn't tell us apart. You'd lose, Bill. Well, yeah, but can you think of a better way to spend a dollar? <laughs> you, you wouldn't do uh, any good for the play, Bill. The part calls for a French jewel thief named Raoul. Well, I could handle that. Now, how's this? Ah, uh, Gracie, ma chérie, to match your crimson lips, I will steal rubies. To match your snow-white teeth, I will steal pearls. And then to match your beautiful brown eyes, I will steal... Yes? A cup of Maxwell House coffee. <laughs> That's really precious, Gracie. Gee, Maxwell House is appetizing, rich, full-bodied, and mellow. Coffee at its full-flavored best. Good to the last drop. Bill, you're not very convincing as a romantic Frenchman. Talk about love. Talk about l'amour. Okay. L'amour, people, buy and enjoy Maxwell House than any other brand of coffee in the world. Oh, forget it, Bill. Charles Boyer, Boyer will be the Frenchman, but you can help us. How? Well, we need a gorgeous, irresistible, exotic creature to frame a certain party. Okay. Who do you want me to frame? Oh, no. Oh, no. <laughs> we want you to suggest a girl who can vamp Sidney Strode. Sidney Strode? He's a pushover, I know. Just the babe. Hand me the phone. Oh, yeah, and tell her to be in his lap with her head on his chest at exactly 3 o'clock. And then I'll break in and catch them. Okay. Hello? Uh, oh, hello, Gloria. Uh, this is Bill. Oh, Billy boy, honey child, baby. <laughs> Gloria. Gloria, I want you to vamp somebody for me. Listen, and I'll explain it to you. Go ahead, sugar boy. Hmm. <laughs> You see, you're just the one to do it. You, you've got that gorgeous blonde hair, those luscious red lips, that, that terrific figure, that... that... Never mind, Glory. I'll come over there and explain it to you. <laughs> oh, hello, Mr. Scroats. I came over as soon as I got your phone call. What's up? Well, Gracie was in here a little while ago with the screwiest proposition I ever heard of. You must have quite a problem being married to her, George. I sure have. Still, I guess you have a bigger one if you weren't. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, here's what she... Excuse me, George. Hello? Okay, right away. George, make yourself at home a minute. 
They want me in the other office. Okay, Sid. What a dame I married. I wonder what she got me in now. Hello, you great, big, gorgeous hunk of stuff. <laughs> huh? Come on, sit on the sofa with little Glory and let's form a beautiful friendship. You must have the wrong man, miss. <laughs> Who did you want to see? The biggest man in the whole radio business. Yeah, you got the right man. <laughs> Come here, Daddy. Time's getting short. Huh? I'm supposed to have my head on your chest in three minutes, and it'll take me two of those to find it. <laughs> now, look here. Oh, don't fight me, honey. Just relax like a big bale of cotton and let this little old bull weevil take over. Hey. Hey. Get off my lap. Cut that out. Hey. Uh-huh, Sidney Strode. So I... I uh-huh. <laughs> Gracie. Uh-huh, George Byrne. And I do mean uh-huh. <laughs> Honest, Gracie, this wasn't my fault. Sid Strode left the room for a minute, and this girl came in and jumped in my lap. Oh. Oh, oh, I see. She was supposed to vamp Mr. Strode, so he'd have to give me Dinah Shaw's half hour next Thursday. Well, why do you need that? Oh, well, for my love scenes with Charles Boyer. Gracie, you've gone out of your mind about Boyer. Why, I'll bet if he asked you, you'd run away to Paris with him and forget me. Oh, no, I wouldn't, George. I'd write to you every week. <laughs> Be sure to tune in next Thursday night when the makers of Maxwell House Coffee and Bird's Eye Frosted Foods will bring you a special full-hour program starring George Burns and Gracie Allen, Harry Varnzel, Meredith Wilson, Robert Emmett Dolan's orchestra, yours truly, Bill Goodwin, and our special guest, Giles Boyer. And we hope, by the way, that Dinah Shore will be back. Oh, wow, what a program. A lover like Charles Boyer and a singer like Dinah Shaw. Yeah, I wish I had Dinah Shaw's talent. I wish you had Boyer's. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, millions of men, women, and children in Europe and Asia today face starvation. America, the best-fed nation in the world can relieve this crisis by making available to foreign purchasers increased amounts of wheat, rice, fats, and oils. And here's what you and I can do to help. Use more of the plentiful foods. Fresh fruit, vegetables, potatoes, poultry, fish, and eggs. Do this so that you can use less wheat products and fats and oil. Don't waste any food at your table. And keep on saving and turning in used fats. We'll be seeing you next week with that extra special hour show. Until next Thursday, then... Good luck from the makers of Maxwell House, America's number one brand of coffee. Always good to the last drop. Oh, goody, goody, jello pudding tonight. It tastes like grandma's only more so. You ain't kidding, that's right. And, and just, just as jello, jello, six delicious locked in flavors can't be beaten. So the proof of jello pudding's in the eating. The jello twins are hard to find, but keep on looking in your store. When sugar shortages are over, there'll be more. Just a taste of Jell-O pudding, or of Jell-O, and you know, it's the one and only J-E-L-L-O. And now, an important announcement. Daylight saving time starts this Sunday. If your community changes to daylight time, you'll hear Maxwell House Coffee Time next Thursday at the same hour. If your community does not change to daylight time, listen next week one hour earlier. If in doubt, check your local paper. Night. This is NBC, the national broadcasting company.